It's almost the beginning of a new year, and that means it's time to create your annual plan. And in this episode, I'm going to teach you how to do it. Welcome to the Classy Career Girl podcast. I'm your host, Anna Runyon, founder and CEO of Classy Career Girl, one of Forbes' most influential career sites. This is a podcast for a community of women who want to turn their passions into work they love. You'll learn how to become happy, successful, and balanced with class, skill, and style. We believe that you can create your future. So stop delaying your great life. Go put yourself out there. You can have your great life and career right now. Whether you are just thinking of starting a career change or you want to start and grow a side hustle, this is the place to be, the place to find clear vision and focus for the next year. Hey there, I'm Anna Runyon, and since 2010, I have been helping overwhelmed women plan out and launch their perfect careers so that they can have more time to pursue their passions, more time with their family, and make more money doing what they love. As the CEO of one of Forbes 35 most influential career sites, Classy Career Girl, and the founder of the Plan Course, I have helped women of all ages identify and plan out and launch their perfect careers in pretty much every type of industry. And through it all, I've discovered that there's a few small planning steps that are crucial and most women miss these when it comes to making a career change or starting a business. And these simple planning steps that I am teaching you can make a huge difference in your success. They can mean the difference between you finding your dream career or getting stuck in another dead end job. In this workshop, we're going to be teaching you how to stay focused on your goals and find direction so that you can make your perfect career and life happen. I want to take you a little deeper into planning out your perfect career. And I'm going to show you how to know what to focus on first and how to set attainable goals that you actually complete. We're going to be covering a lot of ground here. So make sure you download the workbook below the annual plan roadmap so you can follow along and take notes. So there's a reason why you're watching this video right now. It's either because you're struggling to make a career change and you don't know what steps to take first, or you want to start and grow a side hustle and you want more freedom and flexibility in your career. And there's never been a better time to ditch that stressful job and instead make a fulfilling and exciting career happen. Let me tell you why now is the perfect time. There is so much opportunity for you right Right now to pursue your passion and turn it into a career you love. Want to start a business? Well, traditionally, business ownership and entrepreneurship has been male dominated, but now the future of entrepreneurship is female. You can be a working mother without having to sacrifice your family. Moms are using motherhood to reinvent their careers instead of letting motherhood hold them back. Moms need freedom and flexibility and the future of remote work is now. You just have to learn how to make it work for you. We are in the midst of a huge change of work right now. There will be more freelancers than employees by 2035. The future of work isn't about college degrees. It's about job skills. Your degree can be meaningless if you don't learn how to become an expert in what you were born to do. So what are you waiting for? Without making a change right now into a career that you love and that you are meant for, you might not be able to make change and adapt all of these changes that are happening in our working world. You soon might find yourself without a job. When you are doing what you are passionate about and what you love, then no one can replace you. The future of work is human, more meaningful, and female all the way. If you learn more about yourself and are 100% you in your career or the business that you want to start, you will be ready for the future of work and you'll be more successful and happier too. So in this video, I'm going to teach you what tasks you need to do in the next year to create a thriving career or business. All right, let's dive into the annual plan roadmap so you know what you're going to do next year. So first of all, make sure you download the handout below. This is the annual plan roadmap handout, and you definitely want to have have this handy so you can write on it, 
print it out, you can edit it online, um, but you just wanna have it handy as I walk you through every step of creating your annual plan. So let's dive in and let's get started. So first of all, remember that today's annual planning task might take a little bit of time, uh, but don't worry, just keep it super simple and write down the first things that come to your mind for the year. It doesn't have to be perfect and you can always go back and finalize your plan later on. As you continue this habit, you'll repeat this annual planning page every 90 days. Now, normally when you make your annual plan, you do it once a year and then you never do it again, right? Well, with my planning system, we review your annual plan every 90 days. And that means as you keep doing this and you keep making it a habit, your goals will become even clearer and you'll have more clarity and focus. So if this is your first time, you might find it a little tough, but it's going to get easier as you keep doing this every single qu quarter and you have more clarity and direction. So to get started, the first thing to do is write today's date. That's it. I told you it was going to be easy. This does not have to be hard. You know how, you know how to write down today's date. So for real step one, no, we're going to go and we're going to create three goals for the next year. Now you've already done the hard work that is going to make this task super easy. Go back to what you wrote down in your vision journal. Um, remember we talked about what do you wanna create in the future in video number one of this workshop. When you imagine completing your goal, what does your life look like? Those are two really important questions that are gonna help you create your annual goals. So now if you're going to get to that vision, what are three goals you can take over this next year to help you get there? In order to reach your vision, what steps do you need to take over the next five years? So for example, in order to reach my vision of having an impact on helping young girls choose their careers and helping moms find careers they love while still supporting their families, I need to spend this next year volunteering and learning more about nonprofits that help these women in San Diego. So instead of doing nothing and being so busy working, I actually over this next year need to carve out the time to participate, to support and help these women. And even though my big five to 10 year vision is scary, like starting a foundation is a vision or contributing millions of dollars, I have no idea how that is going to happen. And it seems totally impossible. So sometimes our visions are really super scary and seem impossible. Um, it's even scary to tell you guys. And that's when you know you have a really good vision and a good why when you don't wanna tell anyone because it's so big, it's scary. So I guess we're friends now because you guys now know my vision. So now that I know what my vision is, I can start completing this section, which is my annual goals, so that in the next year, to give me those baby steps to get to my long-term vision, I want to get involved in a nonprofit organization in San Diego. I want to start donating some money and helping 100 women. And now I prefer uh, not to put financial goals because I am motivated a lot more by the amount of women that I can help. So that's just based off my experience of what works best for me. I usually don't do financial goals. I do usually do a certain number of women that I want to help. So let's move on to the next step. And remember, if this is the first time doing the annual plan, you may find this hard to so just go back to your vision journal, pick three of the things you want to create to work on. It's going to be okay. You can do this. So figure out your three main career or business goals for the year. Only three things you want to have done. Keep it simple. Focus on impact goals. Look at your vision. What do you need to do in the next year to reach your five to 10 year vision? And just take your time with this. All right, step two, what the heck do we need to do? And when should we do it to reach those annual goals? Well, here's the thing. We can't do all of these goals at one time. We need to work in focus sprints to reach our goals. We need to know what is our priority for each quarter of the next year to help us reach those goals. So here in our planning system, we work in 90 day increments. So we break down the next year into four quarters. 
So go ahead and write down the dates of the next four quarters, which is three months in a quarter. So write down those dates in your plan. So look back at those three annual goals and write down what quarter you need to take action to add up to your goal. So let's say that one of my goals is to launch an online course next year. My quarter one focus would be on market research and audience building. My quarter two focus would be on marketing and advertising and launching my online course. My quarter three focus would be on delivering the course and fulfillment and exceeding my students' expectations. And my quarter four focus would be on preparing to launch my course again the following year with what I've learned from the first launch. So does that make sense? Feel free to post in the comments below if you have any questions. So I like to have three focuses per quarter, but one to two is totally fine. There are no rules. Make this work for what works best for you. So what areas do you need to focus on to reach your three big annual goals? And each quarter, you should have a focus that will help your, you reach your top three goals. And so go do that. Go write that down. And now after you have taken your goals and broken them into these quarterly focuses, we need to then think about next year. So we can't do everything in one year that we want to. So I always like to add stuff that I can't get done this year onto the next year list. So a great example, that book I told you about in the last video that I've been meaning to write, it will get done next year, I swear. So that's in my next year list, as well as, you know, uh, going on a trip to Italy or taking a vacation, taking a four week vacation. Yeah, that's not happening this year. But I don't want to forget that that is my dream to spend four weeks with my family somewhere fun over the summer. My kids are young and I don't want to miss summer working indoors on my business. So it's really important for me to take note of those things that are my dreams and, and next year I really, really want to get that done. And then your personal goals. Many people ask me if they should have two planners, one for work and one for personal life. I say heck no. If you are like me, work and life are so intertwined and my planning system is all about keeping things simple. So that's why there's a spot for your personal goals right here on the annual plan. It could be working out three times per week, having a date night with my husband, paying off debt, volunteering at my daughter's school, whatever it is, your personal life is important because if you push it aside because you are so busy working on your career or business goals, you're, you're going to lose that fulfillment. And we're all about fulfillment here, work and personal. So here's an example of one of our students, Jennifer, who completed the annual plan. She was so excited. She shared it in our Facebook group and wrote finished. Um, and then also on the screen are some of our students that were in our in-person workshop who are so excited. Like you can see, look at the joy on everyone's face when they're planning and they, we had just completed our annual plans and everyone is like super excited and pumped because they did it. And I hope you feel Feel the same after you complete your annual plan too. Um, Rebecca, she completed her annual plan and she was using stickers in our planner and, and colored pens. And I love that. I love, you know, if you need to get a colored pen and some stickers and to decorate this little handout, go for it. And she said, wow, this feels so good to have it all written down. And that's where we're headed. We're going to feel great when this is all done. So just remember, if this is your first time creating your annual plan, it's always the hardest. It gets easier as you do it again and again. Next time you create your 90-day plan, you'll have a much better idea of what to focus on. And next time you create your annual plan, you'll have a much better idea of what to focus on. Okay, we have covered a lot of ground in this training. Now remember, you don't need to do it all. You don't even need to know it all. This video was about creating your annual plan and knowing what to focus on first over this next year and how it's possible to have direction and focus using my planning system. A lot of people have been telling me that they just don't have enough time. Well, let me tell you, you have all the time you need to accomplish what matters most. You do not need to do everything and maybe it's time for you to start saying no. It might be time for you to start making more time for yourself and your goals. 
but I hear you. I'm a mom of two little girls and I understand how hard it is to find time for yourself and for the goals that you really wanna accomplish. I struggle as a mom some days just to even get one thing done. And I've had to learn how to say no to things and how not to do things anymore. Something as simple as responding to emails. That's where I say no. Some of you guys may have sent me an email. I'm sorry, you probably didn't get a response from me. That's just not the best use of my time. I have very limited time. Before I had my kids, I responded to every email. Now, five years in as a mom, I don't respond to email. I know my priorities. And when it comes to my priorities, one of my priorities is my coaching clients. Now, if they send me a message, they know how to reach me. They send me a message, they will get an immediate response because they're my priority, they're my focus. And my mission is to help them make progress. People who send me 10 of the same email to get on my podcast, well, I ignore that. But my kids, if they want my attention and if they have a question, well, they get my undivided attention because I know my priorities and I say no to the things that are not my priority. It's impossible to do it all. So we've got to start letting some things go. And remember, you don't have to be perfect. I'm not perfect. None of us are. We are not perfect moms. We are not perfect bosses. We are just doing the best that we can and we're prioritizing what is most important to us so that we can live fulfilling lives. Now, I've also had people tell me that they were not born productive and that they don't think that this planning system is going to work for them. Let me break it to you. No one is born productive, even me. I was not born a planner. I was not born productive, but I wanna change how you're thinking. Instead of thinking that being productive is something you're born with, I want you to think about being productive as a skill that you can learn about and that you can develop with time. I've also heard from some women who feel like they're not disciplined enough to be able to follow through and reach their goals. They've tried to do this every single year and they just don't have the discipline. But here's what I have to say about that. Working in your passion doesn't require discipline because you're doing what you love. So if you're struggling with discipline, it may be because you're trying to do goals and do work that isn't really your passion and isn't what you love to do. And it's time to start analyzing and thinking about what you might wanna do instead because you don't need discipline. If you love what you do, it comes natural. Spend your time focusing on doing work you love and discipline comes easy. And lastly, I've heard from a lot of you that you have tried to reach your goals in the past and it didn't work and you're feeling super bummed. Me too. I have failed way more than I have succeeded. And I know now that it's good to fail because I learn from my failures and I can try new things and different things that are gonna work better next time because now I've learned my lesson. You absolutely cannot give up on your goals no matter what. Change things up, try different things, ask for help because you can get different results by trying different things. Now I am so excited to tell you about the next video I have for you. It's called The Plan Blueprint. You are going to love this one. I really do think it's going to be your favorite of this whole workshop series. I'm gonna walk you through my entire plan system. I'm also gonna teach you how to create your 90-day plan and the bite-sized steps that you need to take in the next 90 days to reach your goals. You're gonna learn how to get to where you want to be successfully. And you're also going to be able to download my plan blueprint, which is going to be really helpful and I think you're gonna love it. Many people come to my in-person workshops just for my blueprint. And I've never shared it online for free before, so watch your inbox for that. Now, I want to hear from you. What action are you going to take to get started? Let me know in the comments below. Please share it with three friends that you know, especially if they have goals that they want to accomplish too. It's so much easier to get started on this journey when you have other people doing it with you. Thanks for listening to the Classy Career Girl podcast. If you are serious about changing your life and your career, we'd love to welcome you into our membership community. It's where we go deeper on the principles that we teach in this podcast. So come join us in class. You can learn more at www.classycareergirl.com forward slash join.